Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I would like to talk a bit about the Jade Pillow Gate. That's something I refer to a lot, and we touch on it at various levels. But today, I'd like to take it into a deeper dive and also like to include more people in the conversation. We've been getting a lot of new subscribers to the channel. And uh, is, since it's a, a topic which has kind of pervaded all 160 odd of these things, it uh, uh, it bears going back over and and fleshing it out a bit because it's um it's something that is um, essential to what we're talking about here, which is body mind spirit integration. So that is how do we how do we create this state of what I call super consciousness, where you get those three elements of your being aligned in such a way as to, to create an alchemy that takes you to a whole new level of, uh, of not just awareness, but also performance. And so this kind of gets to the core of what we're talking about in Taiji Chuan, which is get to get your your ability uh, sufficiently refined so that you're opening up this state of awareness, which takes you beyond the limits of your five senses and your conscious mind. So you're moving into a transrational and transpersonal state as you're doing this, at the same time as being able to also function at a very high level on a physical level and also at a mental level. So this is where we're ratcheting up human ability to a whole new level and at the same time opening to this expanded awareness which takes us into uh, the realm of what I would consider to be the spiritual. And so the a key element in that is this jade pillow gate and the Yu Chen is the, the point there. And it's something that um, it's at the base of the skull. And um, so if I turn my back to you and this point right here, the point I'm referring to is right here at the base of the skull. There's also two points right here at the, uh, just to the side of that. And, and those are acupuncture points, which have the same name. But the ones that we're referring to, it uh, is a singular one that's kind of right dead center between those. And that's the point, the Yu Chen, that we're talking about in terms of the energy gate. And that's because it's, it's the place where the spine uh, enters into the, the, the cranium. So your occiput, which is this big bone right here at the, at the base of your, at the, at the back of your skull, that's your occiput, and uh, where the spine connects up to that, there is a, a joint there that is uh, a, a really important point. It's the uh, uh, where the topmost vertebra, the atlas, is is sitting right. The the occiput is sitting right on that, and there's a there's you know some space between the that uh, that that vertebra and the and the uh, and the occiput that, that makes it a joint there it's not much of a uh, uh a joint it's actually kind of sitting there but it's a um, it's called the atlas it's because it, it's supporting your head and so the uh, you know in the 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 titan atlas in in mythology was you know condemned for his sins to he had to support the uh, the heavens on his shoulders and that was uh, that was his penalty. So he got the uh, he got that gig, and our atlas, our topmost vertebra, gets that gets that gig there. It's supporting the head, and the uh, just below it there is the axis, which is those two, the first and second cervical vertebrae, are responsible for the movement of the head uh, largely, and. As we, primarily as we get older, there's a tendency to move away from that being the pivot point of your, 
of your your motion and it moves down the neck and um and it's kind of gotten to it, it it's been around forever but it's kind of gotten to epidemic proportions lately because of what is doctors are calling tech neck which is or computer neck or texting neck and that's because people they're looking at their their phones like this or they're looking at their computers like that and whenever they do that there is more stress that is placed on the on this lower part of the neck there because you're supporting this 8 to 12 pound mass there your your cranium your your head at 8 to 10 12 uh, 8 to 12 pounds of that which if it's aligned perfectly it's you got you know that's that's all the weight that it's supporting however if you start to create more of an angle so if you get down to like say 45 degrees then you your head actually weighs 50 pounds at that point and then if you take it even lower which a lot of people do then it's it goes up 60 70 pounds so there's a lot of strain that goes into the neck and shoulders whenever we get that whenever we get the tech neck and uh, and it's something that you know you know I see it on the subways you know people leaning over there looking at their phones and and they're they're creating all this this neck tension if that's done for hours a day say which people which you know people who are sitting in front of computers are often doing then you get you know a a, a lot of strain there it builds up a lot of strain and it kind of it creates this tension and a shortening of the the tissue in the in, in the back of the neck, the muscles and the, the connective tissue gets shorter because it's it's trying to support you. It's going it's hypertonified. That means that the muscles are working very hard to support this, say, 50 pounds of weight that, you know, the muscles are not designed to handle that easily. So they have to kind of kachuga, kachuga, kachuga. They got to kind of really work at it to to make something happen. The uh, the other effect of that is that it whenever that that head comes forward, it, it comes usually comes with a a uh, uh, a stuck point there at the base of the skull, and that affects your first off the circulation. The amount of blood and oxygen uh, going into and into and out of the brain is uh, uh, is reduced. You're choking off the you've got a kink in the hose, and so that tends. And if you do that for a while, uh, this was an issue for me for many years. You know, going back to my childhood, it. Uh, I would get these ferocious headaches and it was about 30 years ago when it finally the light went on for me like oh rick you know you're you're doing this you know you're sticking your chin out and you're you're creating this neck tension and when i started to correct that the headaches went away so uh the headaches were just my body's way of telling me that you know rick you're doing something stupid why don't you why don't you do something different and uh, when I did, they they went away. So the getting this increased circulation into the brain, and also the out of the brain, so that there's you know it's there's a, a constant uh, that's why I call it circulation. It's moving around, and uh, if it doesn't, if you don't have that stagnation there, then you're going to feel brighter, fresher. You're your uh, you'll have more energy more clarity in your in your in your brain the uh beyond that though there's also something called cerebral spinal fluid which is and basically it's smart water and it is in the dural tube which surrounds the spinal cord and the brain and it nourishes the nervous system so it um, something that I work with intimately as a craniosacral therapist 
where I will hold somebody's head for a long time and tune into the flow of cerebral spinal fluid. And by doing so, you transform their state of being, their state of awareness, there you create a, uh, a, a more harmonious system by releasing the kinks in the hose in your, uh, in your uh, dural tube. So, uh, so there, there's things, but then we go even more subtle than, than that, we go to the chi and the chi gets blocked. So, and this is something that, you know, has been going on forever. It didn't just come around with computers. You know, it's something that is uh, in ancient texts, they talk about, you know, the, you know, this, this, this relationship between the head and the, and the body and how you transform the, your state by, by correcting your posture, basically. So we're looking for this, there's a sweet spot there in your relationship between your head and your torso through your neck. Whenever you align this correctly, then you get this, you, they call it opening the jade pillow gate but also then leads to opening the brain gate and you are accessing more efficiently your, the activities of, uh, of your brain and you create this whole brain coherence because it's uh, at that point, at that jade pillow gate, you have the medulla oblongata, which is at the part of the brain stem and that, uh, controls your internal organs, your breathing, your heart rate, things like that. And it's considered by some to be the most important part of your brain because if it's not working, you're dead. So it kind of it's, it changes the game right there. Um, so getting that you know working correctly, if you can do that, it then uh, uh, you get a this warm gooey feeling from your body whenever things are in harmony, whenever you get these things aligned so that, oh, there's a, um, there's no restriction on that, uh, then your internal organs are functioning at a much more serene level, a more efficient level. And so that you actually get this feedback, your body sends you a warm gooey feeling, you get you know, these endorphins and neurotransmitters that, that reward you and create this uh, happier state. So also at this point, it's where the vagus nerve, which connects up to these, these organs. And so it, uh, the vagus nerve goes down and it's part of the, uh, primarily part of the parasympathetic nervous system and which is the energy gathering part of the, the autonomic nervous system. The, so the sympathetic nervous system is the energy expenditure, which is the go, go, go part, and the parasympathetic gathers in. So we can see that this has a lot to do with your vitality. So whenever you get the, whenever you get these things uh, connected up. So the other thing that happens right there at that, at that point, there's something called the reticular formation which is part of the brain, which is a transition from your body to your mind, basically. So it's going from the from the the, the fundamental animal part of, of you to the the part of your thinking process, your your emotional processing, things like that, that are happening at the higher levels of your brain. And so this controls also your ability to move efficiently. So that reticular formation is has, has a lot of functions and I, uh, uh, I'm i not an expert on that, so I can't really speak authoritatively on that. But I do know that these three things together happen right there at that jade pillow gate. So in the literature, in the Taiji literature, they talk about the three treasures. That is your um, your Jing, your Shen, 
and your chi. And these three treasures come together at that point and create this alchemy. So the Jing is loosely translated as your essence. It's the, and you know, in the Taoist literature, they talk about it being the endowment of heaven that makes you the unique human being that you are. It is, it's your destiny is bestowed upon you, you know, at that. And then you're, you then have to fulfill your destiny. So it's a, uh, you get this, uh, it's the, you know, your, your Jing is, you know, that initial uh, in, investment in, in, in the Taoist literature is like it's you're called the primordial chi and it is uh, a finite quantity of of life force that whenever it's exhausted you're gone so that's the so you have that your prenatal chi your postnatal chi is all this other cool stuff that we do to kind of build up so that we are not spending the principle, we're spending the interest, which is the postnatal chi. So that's uh, that's that. So we have this essence, which is which is considered the earthy part of the of your energy. That's like you know, it's the the grounded, uh, it's the the body part, it's the substantial part, and then the shen is the active part of spirit. So you got shen, which is your spirit is kind of you're seen as the, the the active part, the yang part, the yang expression is shen, and then the uh, the uh, the yin part, which you can translate as soul, would be the hun. And but the so in this case we're talking about the the do part, right? The part that gets gets her done. So this we have the coming together of shen and jing at this at this spot but the third element of the three treasures is what we need to make that happen to make the alchemy possible and that's the chi so without the without enough juice without enough energy nothing's happening and the th third element that uh, or the fourth element i guess the Talk in addition to the three treasures is the jur, which is your will. That is your intention to make something happen. So will is is just your the mental process that that chooses to do this and not that. And uh, so the the jur that we we use here is we we go through our qigong, we go through our meditation, we go through our taiji, whatever. We are making choices to. To make something happen we're saying oh we're going we want this thing we want to move in this particular direction so in this case what we're doing with the the jade pillow gate is we are consciously aligning the head in such a way as to maximize the efficiency of the energy as it as it allows for this alchemy to occur. It creates this, this, this alchemy of Jing and Shen. And uh, so a lot of what we've been doing has been tapping into the big chi. That is using the energy, not just limited to our physical form, but opening up the energy, earth energy through our feet and the energy of the heavens through the through the 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 top of the head and bringing those two together to create more chi which then allows for this this to occur so that's uh that's the background that's the game we're playing with this and the um the exercises that we've been doing you know have been you know to lift the chin and, and so we're creating more range of motion. I have you rolling your head and we'll do some of those here. You know, opening, opening the neck, opening and reclaiming lost territory because so much of this is remedial. That is, 
particularly as I mentioned before about the texting and things like that the the tech head the tech neck you know we have created a disadvantaged situation for our body mind so in order to change that and to create more opportunity going forward so that in a year you'll be better off than you are now in five years better off than that 10 years and then age becomes less of a factor and more it's about where are you expending you know where are you placing your juror where are you where are you directing your attention, your your intention. And so making the choice to do this and not that. So we get this. And so what we're going to play with today is some uh, of uh, some of the stuff that we've been doing ordinarily, but thinking of it more in the context of this opening the jade pillow gate and fine tuning something which you know we've been playing with and creating more space in the uh, in the neck so that we have we have more opportunity to uh, to find this uh, this opening find this this thing because it's really threading a needle getting it exactly right. And it's something that is going to shift every time you try it. And that's why we have to keep bringing the, the juror back into this. We have to say, no, no, I'm going to do this again. It doesn't happen on its own. If you wait for it to happen, it's just going to, you're going to fall, you're going to move in the direction of entropy. You're going to move in the direction of, of the system collapsing because that's what nature does. What we're doing is we're, saying no we want more so let's um uh let me see if there are any questions on this because i covered a lot of stuff there and before we get uh before we do start doing an exercise anybody have uh, any questions or comments disagreements thoughts people are leaving okay uh <laughs> jonathan you had something yes Oops. So it seems like the hip joint and like what were the quad, the shoulders, and now maybe where the, the, the uh, vertebrae meets the, the skull there, they seem to be very special in their way to, you can do all this kind of rotating, right? I mean, not a lot of the joints in the body can be that flexible. Are we, yes. is the idea that we, do we want to really just play with that? Do we want to have yes. that sense of maximal movement? Not just you know, rigidly, you know, remembering to keep it light, but really play with that. Yeah. Yes, very much so. A, a good point. So it's uh, and that actually there's a point of emphasis there which I didn't mention, but I'd like to to, to state it now because following up what you just said, which is we are not looking for an optimal fixed relationship and. And, and try to replicate that each time. When I said mm -hmm. before, it's like, it's a new thing every time. It's like, you mm -hmm. have to go into it and say, you know, it's, you're meeting your mm -hmm. Jade Pillowgate for the first time. Mm -hmm. You're introducing nice. yourself and you're starting over nice. again. And you're, yeah, and each time you do that, it, uh, it's incredible uh, what happens. It makes, um, uh, a few of you have seen uh, a picture of uh, uh, our old friend Stan, they, uh, uh, who uh, passed away last year. But he, uh, he, uh, there's a picture of him standing. The Stan was like 140 pounds, soaking wet, and and uh, he, uh, <laughs> you know, was is hunched over due to his illness. He was kind of his back had had hunched over like that, like this dowager. His head was kind of down, stuff like that. And, but here he is standing in his stocking feet, holding off, holding, reaching out like that and holding off two very large classmates of his who were each over 250 pounds at the time. And they're pushing on him. And he was smiling and standing on his stocking feet and they couldn't move him. Even though he's this kind of a, you know, crippled old guy. And uh, because he was reaching and opening that 
as he's extending. So he's, uh, even though his structure was far from what we would call ideal, his intention, <laughs> his desire to, to implement this particular idea caused him to be able to access this Jing Shen, which amplified his effective power considerably. So, uh, uh, yeah, anybody else? We're good? Okay, let's uh, let's do some. This we can, uh, let's just start at sitting down at first. So, You can, uh... no, we're gonna stand up, sorry. Sorry, let's uh, let's stand up. That way we can get, we get more chi going if we're standing. But you can do it sitting too if you're, if uh, I know Peter, you got, you know, you're having a little bit of tough time with the uh, walking right now. So you can do it sitting, but the, um, let's just try it. It's easier to, to, uh, to crank up the chi if we play with it like this. So uh, why don't you zoom in on me there a little bit. Okay. No, that's not working. So it's not, I guess I wanted to have my, my feet in there. So zoom out, uh, there we go. Um, so anyway, so let's begin with your feet. Uh, no, too far. Uh, feet uh, about a hip width and we're going to, we're going to, Connect up to the. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whoa, Sorry, trippy I man. I took the camera. Now. <laughs> the three bears. Okay, so let's uh, let's begin. Have your feet uh, go into the balls of your feet. Set your knees so that you're centering over the balls of your feet for now. And reach up with the crown of your head. And here we are, we're opening up that jade pillow gate. We're just by tucking in the chin and reaching there. And um, good, now feel the, uh, just relax, feel yourself sinking down into the earth and Reach at the same time, reaching up with the crown and feel that gentle lengthening at the back of your neck. And so, as Jonathan was saying, we want to rotate from the hips a little bit, get really make sure those are nice and open because that's a that's one of the big gates there. And the shoulders, you want to reach out a little bit with your elbows and open up the shoulder gates. So we have these three very important gates here at the qua, at the base of the skull, and in the shoulders. So that allows the energy to circulate much more freely. Point and reach with your index fingers and feel your energetic coherence. We got the three pillars going there. So we're creating more space. So let's start just by raising the chin Pivoting from the atlas, you can also put your index your index finger right there at the base of your skull and lift the chin and drop it. Reach down. When you're reaching down, you really want to tuck it in there and lift up. So we're expanding our the space that in the um, joint there. Now bring your chin down and touch your chest and really feel that lengthening there in the back of your neck as you do that. So we're consciously, intentionally making it longer. We're opening up that, that, that space there just so that we have a bigger frame of reference. And then come up and find that sweet spot where you can feel 
something happening there at the base of the skull. Good, now rotate the head. And you're just trying to rotate as far up toward the top of your cervical vertebrae as you can, creating space there, and then go the other way. Any additional flexibility that you can get there is going to give you more personal space. You're going to feel bigger if you have more space there to open up. And then back to center and find your sweet spot. Find what's what's the optimal way to hold your head right now. Good. Now let's do some turkey head. You just push your face forward and pull it back. Again, pivoting from your topmost vertebra. All, each of these exercises are really very gross uh, exercises to expand your, you know, your your muscles and your connective tissue and create you know, uh, a little more flexibility there. So, and then come back to center. Now. Take your head and rotate it to your left. Really as high up on the, the vertebrae as you can, high up on the cervical vertebrae. So you're bringing your ear toward your shoulder and lengthening your neck as you do that. And feel that expansion there. And bring it back to center. And go the other direction. And you may notice how your neck has gotten tight. And that your motion is restricted. Your range of motion is restricted. And that's okay. Because this is just a step in the direction of opening to new possibilities. And go the other direction and feel that. And you're lengthening that back to center. And yeah, and back to center. So now we're we're by creating more space there, we have more options in terms of where we can align the head. So there's a, uh, in boxing, you are advised very early in your training to tuck in the chin. So whenever you're, you're boxing, the chin is, is, is tucked in. Because if, you're, if you're, your chin is jutting out, a blow is going to be absorbed by the head. Whereas if your chin is tucked in, it goes, the same blow doesn't get absorbed by the head. It goes all the way down through your body and through your feet. So you're able to, to take that energy and redirect it. So it also changes the angles that, uh, that things will hit you so that you're able to, to disregard a lot of the, the incoming energy because it just it's glancing off of you, whereas if your if your face is sticking out, you're changing the angle, your angle of your nose. It's much easier to get 
bopped in the nose, if your your nose is sticking out like that, then if it's pointing down, and then you're you're going to absorb more shock by your forehead rather than than the more delicate parts of your of your face. So that's a a very simple, a very uh, gross way of of thinking about it. It's like okay, I'm going to protect my protect my chin, protect my nose, you know, by tucking in my chin. Um, some boxers who had trouble with this would, uh, the trainer would say, okay, uh, give me $20 and stick the, stick the, uh, the $20 bill under the chin. And then they'd have to go through their whole routine, you know, jumping rope and punching and, and uh, working a speed bag and everything like that with the twenty dollar bill under the uh, under the chin, and if you lift up the chin, twenty dollars trainer grabs that. You grab another twenty and you start over again, and it can be a very expensive day for you if you are unwilling to keep that the twenty dollar bill there. So the uh, I'm not recommending that. But I would say that you could put a tennis ball under your chin and go through your Tai Chi form with a tennis ball there. And so right now, I'd like to just go through a little, uh, just a very some simple Qigong, but I'd like you to imagine you have a tennis ball under your chin and this is a really a, a structural remedy. It's it's a remedial thing. It's I'm not recommending this as a uh, a, a higher truth or anything. I'm just saying that this is a way of training yourself because I find that I forget it. My my chin pops up whenever I'm I'm working unless I'm consciously you know feeling that tennis ball there. So I have to constantly keep my jade pillow gate open, which then allows more Jing Chen. And it also aligns my body in such a way that I'm not dealing with this extra 50 pounds of weight that just moving my head around. So let's just go through a, so a very simple uh chicken and just keep that that tennis ball there underneath your chin. So go to the balls of your feet and reach with the wrists very slowly coming up and just notice as you do this the any um pre-conscious impulses to lift your chin as you do that. And then reach with the fingers and open your back, open between the shoulder blades, reach with the elbows, open the wrists, feel that extension. And then sink into your heels reach down with your elbows, you're still holding the tennis ball with your chin. And then reach down with your fingers and feel the energy in your hands, in your arms. Feel the energetic connection throughout your whole body. Let's do that again. So sink into the balls of the feet, set the knees, reach with the wrists. Reach with the fingers, the wrists. Reach from your spine, shoulders, shoulder blades, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, reaching out. Mm 
Yeah, sink into your heels, elbows, wrists. And fingers. Now seek of the balls of your feet. Set your knees. Reach with your elbow, your wrists. And you to feel that tennis ball under your chin. Reach with the fingers open and rotate your hands. And feel your fingernails as if they're claws. Feel that dragon energy there. You're feeling that, that. Feel your tail. And turn to your left and wag your tail to reach your tail to the right as you do that reaching out with those fingernails, those claws as you turn. Now wag your tail to the left and turn to the right. Wag your tail to the right. Wag your tail to the left. Wag your tail to the right. Wag your tail to the left. Good, and hold at the center. Just feel the back of your neck and feel that jade pillow gate. And bring your arms down, reach down with your elbows, your fingers. Now very gently explore the position of your head, neck, shoulders, move it around, very gently pushing forward, pulling back, move to the left, to the right, micro movements. Tuck the chin, lift up the chin. You're looking for that optimal connection. And you may find it changing as your muscles relax, as, your, as they lengthen. Sink into your heels. Allow the energy to move down. Feel the yin energy, even as you reach up with the crown. See how fine your adjustments can be as you're searching for that optimal connection there. Because we've cranked up the chi quite a bit now. So we're, we have the resources of the jing and the chi to meet the shen. So we create this, the opportunity for the alchemy to occur. So here is where we run into the paradox of control, where you have to control this or nothing happens, but you can't control too much or nothing happens. 
So you're, there's a paradox here of control and no control, of controlling and allowing. And they're, the yang and the yin of this operation We've controlled our movements so that we created an abundance of chi now. And we've controlled our body so that we have, we're looking for that optimal relationship between the head and the neck. But then we have to let go and allow the energy to do its work. Just notice that, notice the changes that are occurring in your awareness as you do this. It's very subtle um, movements with a disproportionately big effect. Good. Now step in. Take a deep breath. Keep holding that tennis ball as you do that, reaching up. And then as you exhale, disappear the chi. Sink into your heels. And take a moment to dissolve into the emptiness. Feel the effects on your body mind as you detach from your energy, from your thoughts. From your feelings, just just be aware, just move into a state of detached awareness. Please have a seat. It's almost over. Mm. Seven more minutes. How was that? Sharon? Well, it just so happens that I do have a tennis ball here. And Yay. it was excellent. Um, it was, I have a perpetual problem when I'm trying to reach is I get tension in my neck. And that allowed me to know what the feeling of relaxation was in my neck. Nice. And I took it away. And then when, at, you know, more towards the end when we were working on our own micro movements and finding the sweet spot and everything, when I found what was right for me, I noticed that my whole body was soft. Beautiful. That's terrific. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. That's gorgeous. Cool. Anybody else? Scott. Um, so similar to what Sharon said on both respects, but I had a tennis ball also. And hey. it's, it's amazing how when you think you're holding it, but it's slipping. 
It, it's uh, it really, it really, <laughs> yeah. I swear, I swear, I'm holding the damn thing, but I can feel it slipping. Something. I'm not holding it as much as I think I am. It was in, very interesting. Great. And, um, yeah, there was. I realized when we were doing the macro movements. I realized I just I was doing a little bit too much. So I just you know backed it off a little bit and moved my head forward just a hair, and it just felt like I wasn't holding anything. Like everything was just perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. It was, uh, Great. Really, really cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. Peter. Yeah. Thank you. This was a wonderful class for me. You know, working with the Jay Pillowgate has become a favorite practice. I do most of the movements in, uh, that we did today in my morning routine, but the really good takeaway was to move the action up to the upper vertebrae. I, I wasn't aware of that. So I feel like I really got something good to work with in, in the class today. Yeah, thank Perfect. you very much. Thank you, Peter, that's great. Cool. So, Anybody else? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm a great devotee, you might say, of tucking my chin, you know, but I, I wonder uh, if, you know, one is, You've got your, your you really got your head down and texting or whatever the computer. Uh, then I suppose it makes sense to at least to compensate sometimes. Go the other way, maybe. Sure, and that's why that's why we do this. Right? We we we're creating more space. So you're looking not for a specific relationship, holding my position like this the whole time. <laughs> I want to. I want to open up so I have more range of movement and that each moment I am adjusting my, my you know, that point of, of balance for the moment and for, for the needs of the moment. Okay, thank you. You bet. Lynn. So I got so relaxed, I started getting sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, every, but it didn't mess up my um, position, really. Like I was sleepy, but my head wasn't like, falling around. Um, and I guess I'm asking, <laughs> should I be trying to banish the sleepinesses if something like that happens or uh, just hang out there? I'd say explore it. See what's see what's going on. It might be you're tired, you know. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because whenever we get into these situations, particularly whenever the parasympathetic nervous system is freed up, it's where we go when we get sleepy. Right. Okay. So. Okay. Your body mind's gonna have to sort out. It's like, oh, just because I'm relaxed doesn't mean I have to go to sleep now. Stop and that's that. that's <laughs> yeah. learning okay. learning how to how to navigate the parasympathetic nervous system while remaining alert and 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 awake and uh, and and responsive. So it's a uh, so it, it that's 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 great. That's something that I think we all have to go through. You know, it's like as we get more in control of the autonomic nervous system and we start to investigate the parasympathetic, then it's like, oh, it's time for bed now, right? And it's like, <laughs> it's like no, 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 not, not, right, not right now. We're just, uh, we're just chilling out. And so whenever you're meditating, that's, that's something that happens a lot. It's like, you know, you're bringing everything down, you get... You get very calm, but then suddenly you start dozing off. Why? Because your body is, it gets the signal that it's its time to relax. It's time to go to sleep now. So learning how to, you know, training it to uh, to, to do otherwise is, is a, uh, it's a job. Okay. Yeah, Sharon, you had something else? Lynn, when Rick was lecturing, I was doing my own micro movements, trying to find my place. And I think I fell asleep. For part of 
It happens a lot when I talk, so it's <laughs> 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 Peter or Richard um, I I just wanted to mention how difficult it is to change um, in my case decades of postural uh, problems and I've been trying to reach to reach with the crown of my head and open that jade pillow and uh, and I find that I'm much better at it, but it's really difficult because if I'm not specifically paying attention to it, I fall right back into that habit of uh, actually just looking up a little bit and right. looking up just a little bit shuts it right down. And, right. you know, you have to, you have to drop your chin and you have to pull up as well. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's it's not an easy thing to change, but it's certainly right. worth it's certainly worth the effort. Right. Full disclosure, I've been doing this for thirty years, <laughs> and it's still a work in progress. I have to use juror. I have to use my will in order to make it happen, or else I'm just going to go back and I'm going to go back to the way I, you know, I did, you know, the first you know, 50 years of my life or so. So it's like, I uh, I definitely have to make it happen. I have to concentrate. You know, um, Cheng Men Cheng said, you must cause the Yu Chen, the Jade Pillow Gate, to protrude. So it's, a, you know, and if you look at a photograph of him, he has the back of his neck, you know, it's it's straight. It's really straight, but he, he emphasized that you must cause it to protrude. It's like not, it's not like just relax your neck. It's like, no, 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 you, you have to make this thing happen. And, and, uh, and, but it's a, going back to that thing of the paradox of control, how much, you know, where, where is that point where I make it happen and I let it happen. And there's, there's that, it's the seesaw. You know, there is a there is a a causing and an allowing that happens both. You know, you lead and you follow, just like in push hands. There is a leading and a following, and they are they are the same. And if you if you get that formula right, it's like oh, in that moment you're in you're in a state of flow. Jonathan, I just wonder if you think it's most helpful rather than isolating to think of the whole body, the head's going up. You know, but the rest is sinking down, and it's almost like a stretching of yourself, expanding in two ways to be conscious of at the same time. As I important agree. as it yes, is, to, absolutely. You know, and then that's kind of what I was I mean, saying. I, you know, I, we're doing the, you know, the 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 introduction there. It's like yeah, you're reaching with the crown, you're sinking, you know, you're sinking at uh, your your you know through into the earth at the same time. So yes, so you're you're lengthening. Right. I, I mean, because I think all of us find it like I got it. But I'm wondering if if our consciousness, yeah, I'm just wondering if the consciousness we ought to return to more, and I'm not saying I do this, but is that expansion we're talking about in both directions. So it's not never, it's never just the head, but maybe you do the head for a while till you get more used to it. But basically what you want to keep checking into is that double vector thing, you know, one going up and one going down and feeling what that, that is to be expanded. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good point. Very good point. Yeah, definitely something to emphasize. Thank you, Scott. You had something. Um, so, I guess uh, in your experience, I guess there really is no good way to look at your phone, right? It's just look up <laughs> on your back. Yeah, I mean that's that's the, uh, my arms are going to get tired real fast doing that. Well, you know, I think if you reach. With the crown, as you do that, you're lengthening, you're opening the jade pillow gate by looking like that, right? So if I get a I have a phone here, uh, here you go. He's a, so if I'm, if, I'm, if, if I'm doing this, not so good. But if I'm doing this, so if I'm pivoting from here rather than down here, not so bad. So you're actually... You're doing the exercise as you're looking at your phone. 
So yes. Cool. Richard. That that image of causing the jade pillow to protrude, to actually protrude, push out back, uh, that yeah. was that was real really descriptive. Uh, it it it's the only place I've seen it written. You know, it's something from a, a book he wrote, I think in 1939 or something like that. And you know, it uh uh it, it made it made an impact on me because it's like, no, this is not a passive thing, right? Because so much of what we we learn is like, oh, you want to relax everything and and just you know kind of let it all hang out, kind of a thing. And he's saying, no, you must cause it to protrude. And if you look at him, if you look at the photos, man, he is boom, he's got a uh a, some rebar in that in that neck there. It's uh <laughs> It's 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 straight, so um, uh, it's interesting to uh, interesting to see, and I think it uh, you know it's it's a direction that we can move toward. I don't you, you definitely don't want to force everything, but the more we can create range of motion and just constantly have this conversation, and you're going to find that sweet spot. And it doesn't you know it's going to be in different places each time, but. It's the conversation is what makes it interesting to me. It's not, oh, I found it and I can, you know, emboss it and stick it in a, uh, on a shelf. It's like, no, I want to, it's, it's, it's alive. It's something that I have to engage each time with each movement, you know, every, and, and just be aware whenever it slips out as well. Okay, the producer is saying it's time. Thank you all so much. It's been a whole lot of fun. Thank you all so much for your comments and uh, uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. Boom.